All right. So we're going to do stoichiometry. And just real quick, if you came in late uh, at the beginning of the study set 14 that I just went over, uh, the first five minutes, I went through some notes about this week. So again, there's no class on Wednesday because it's Thanksgiving Eve. So you're going to make pie and bread and all that good stuff. Uh, and again, there are two labs this week. So the acidosis, gigalosis lab, you should have started. If you didn't, please make sure you look at it tonight and start it uh, tomorrow. You have to do two parts. And you can do bonus, you can do more than two, but you have to do a diet thing. So um, I went on a bike ride today, and when I came back, I went past McDonald's, and I'm still overwhelmed at how long the freaking lines are for crappy food. So if you were in that line, that was actually my thought. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope none of my students are in this line. That can be your thing, that for the seven days, you are not going to go to fast food. So, or if you're like somebody who has to do Starbucks, seven days, you can do seven days. Yeah. And um, the other lab is aspirin. Once we go through this, should be able to do it. I will have office hours Saturday or I'll answer my emails. And so you have to watch a video for the aspirin lab. It's a short video to get the data. Um, and I talk through the calculations. And then the post lab is just, there were gnomes in the lab with me. And yeah. And by the way, I do ask you to analyze how I did. And I'm laughing because I know how I did. Um, and, and I point out my mistakes. Well, not my mistakes. See, um, I still, I did get, I did get a yield. Just pointing that out. Um, I would have still gotten a 10 out of 10. All of you would have. Um, all right. I'm laughing because on this past Saturday, I did our last lab and I did my first lab for next term. <laughs> and, and then I did the calculations and I'm like, wow, videotaping and me in lab, I don't get very good results. My son's teacher is very meticulous, and he gets perfect results in lab, and I have yet. So on the third lab, you were all so sweet and going, I must have done some calculation wrong, because my teacher should have done much better than this. And no, he does not. All right. You know what? Um, combustion. What does that mean? Oxygen. Yeah. You already got, you're up on the board already. Oh, you can't, you can't see your names up there, can you? <laughs> um, so it does mean oxygen. We'll give somebody else. Actually, it's Brittany. I can see the thing flashing that Brittany's like going crazy here. Um, is she, what, what are my She's products? CO2 and water or O2. I don't remember all of it. She CO2 said. plus H2O. All right. So she, she can. Did she write it in all capitals? Well, CO2 is capitals, so of course she did. Not this I time. I don't think I spelled her name right. Um, all right, so all the carbons become CO2. So we'll need a koi fish, 12 koi fishes. The H2O, we'll need 11. So that gives us our 22 hydrogens. Now the oxygen. We have 11 oxygens here, so we'll just balance there. So now I just need 24 here. Um, anyway, I think this might be the only reaction we get it right tonight. But um, all right, so we're going to do math with balanced equations. And I decided to do that this week because I'm not going to see you for a week. And students tend to do great with this. Because you know what a balanced equation is, and it's what these numbers mean in front. And we are going to write the one here, for those of you who like it, because it's something we'll need for all of us. Uh, the koi fish are the moles. So we're going to start with 3.581 grams of sucrose. And the sucrose is the C12. H22, OE11. And we're going to change it to grams of H2O. Now, the good news is these all start looking the same. 
So by the time we get done with these few pages, you should have the pattern down. Just take good notes. Um, your study set. So this week's folder is pretty light because there's not, no class Wednesday. There are the two labs in the folder. Next week's folder is huge because the Healthy November is there and all the stuff. So, um, yeah. All right. And then we'll just go with this. All right. We'll change our grams to moles. And on the next one, I'll give you a chance to add it up. But that's adding up your 12 carbons times the periodic table. Yeah, you know what? I can't tell you're doing this right now, but if you don't have your calculator and you don't have your periodic table, get them because we're using that for this. Now, we are always making a switch on these. We are always switching from one thing in the equation to something else. That's the, that is what stoichiometry means. So it was a question. I think it was Olga may have asked me this back when we did the moles. And she said, do I have to write this whole thing every time? The answer then, I said, possibly not. Now the answer is yes. Um, you're going to have to label everything with two units, meaning what compounds you're working with. I'm so excited. I'm not at the board, so my arm's not going to fall off from doing this lecture for the first time. All right, now this mole comes down, just the mole. And this is the new step today, is we do our switch. It's not actually a new step. We did a mole to mole step before, but we did it with subscripts. We're doing it now with the balanced equation. So whatever you started with, that mole pulls down. And I'll tell you what you're switching to. You can go between any two things in the equation. You can go from reactant to reactant. You can go from reactant to product. You can go from product back to reactant. You can go anywhere and anything. Um, my ratio is the coefficient. So these are the co coefficients. I don't know how to spell coefficients. I really wanted to write coefficient. So this is R1 and R11. That's those numbers. And then we go to grams of H2O. By the way, <laughs> I'm laughing because so many people make this mistake. H2O is two H's and one oxygen. The two is with the H's. So this is going to come out as 18 because oxygen is 16 plus hydrogens are one. And you punch it in your calculator. Uh, I use my periodic table with four sig figs. I've used three. I, I have a question mark because I didn't know if my answer was right, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. So that's the idea. So, questions. So I want you to, next one, we're going, let's write our starting point, 3.581 grams. C12, H22, O11. So the good news is, and it's really good news for this class, because you guys have been amazing. You've all been doing your work. If you've been doing your work for the past eight weeks, you, you've got this. Write down where you're going. So we're going to molecules, CO2. So what number am I going to get to use when we do this? Somebody? Do you all know the answer? Avogadro's yeah. number. Avogadro's number. Do you remember what it is, Christy? 6.02 times 10 to the negative 23? Positive 23. But yeah, Positive 23. you got it. So go ahead and try it. Go ahead and start your thing your your first step is the same because I did the sucrose or you can punch the other one in and I am videotaping all right 
You know, our penguin did not make the study set tonight. Nobody noticed that. He didn't even, he makes the next study set. No, he doesn't. He's on the last study set, so don't worry about it. All right. Keep going. I'm just going to catch up to you all. So I have right, just label everything with two units. My best piece of advice, don't take a shortcut. You actually solve these faster. I have my grams. So I'm going to change my grams, go to moles. For moles, we can do lots of stuff, and we're doing it. And this, the grams from the periodic table. And then you pull the unit down and your middle step for every problem today, every problem on your study set and worksheet for Monday, your lab is doing this, is the mole to mole step, the koi fish. How do you know where to go? That's why you're writing a note to yourself at the end. You're switching the CO2 because you can go between anything in the equation. This was the whole point of balancing equations. This was the whole point back in the first lecture of teaching you how to do the math. This was the whole point of learning how to add up stuff on the periodic table was to get to this lecture. All right, so 12 to one, that's our koi fish. And then one mole and then it's Christy said 6.02, or if you like 6.022, I think Kaylee is the only one who likes the four sig figs. And you punch it in. Remember, Avogadro's number, you're going to get an exponent. Um, if you're doing the three sig figs, your answers will have three. Uh, I, I'm double dipping. Um, even though I told you in the lab you can't double dip, but um, I'm using the same uh, notes for my class tomorrow, and we use four sig figs. So. And Kaylee likes four sig figs, so maybe I wrote these notes for her. Uh, periodic tables limiting it, limiting me to three. And I wrote Avogadro's number with three. So it's going to be 7.56, 7.55, I don't know. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the variations on the theme. There's a bunch. There's like four we're going to do. So the first one is something called percent yield, which is something I do in the lab. All right, here's our balanced equation. And you can read all about what the gnomes do with this equation. Uh, this is what we need. I usually highlight. In case you didn't know what happened to the missing socks. We have not had any missing socks for a couple of years since I had a talk with the gnomes. And we're good. All right, I give you where to start. You can highlight it. Don't just write kg, tell me kilograms and AOH, and then write down where you're going. Now, if you have a metric unit, you got to get to grams. So I'm going to give you a moment to try this one. Does anybody remember what kilo means? One kilogram equal 10 to the three gram. Yeah, was that Huda? Yes. It's like saying her name. All right, I learned how to say grace in Greek last week because I know somebody whose name is that in Greek. So. It's Karis, which is actually a, a really good friend of mine's last name. So I now have to find out if they know that's what their last name means. So do your thing. Just write in that first step that Huda said. Um, and actually, if you write that step like that, I'm okay with you leaving the NEOH out there because we're just getting rid of the kilograms here. And then you want to change your gram to mole. 
this step, you want to label NaOH, NaOH. Everything has two units. So here we keep it as NaOH. We're changing our gram to mole. And we add up our sodium and hydroxide and we get 40-ish. Three sig figs, three or four, but three sig figs, periodic table. You all remember how to do that? If not, please ask. And then this is our new step. We're going anything in the equation to anything else. Now, I, I do need to make, oh, these little guys are just our states of matter. You ignore them. They're extra information. I'm not sure. I put them on these equations just to show you that they're there. And if you see them, don't freak out. Just ignore them. Um, I, I think on all my questions, no. A lot of my questions, I went from a reactant to a product, and there's always some students who get a mindset that you have to always go from a reactant to a product. You can go any anything in the equation. You could start with uh, the H2O and go to the sodium sulfate. You can go between anything with the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. It's balanced. As long as the equation's balanced, this works. So. I have moles of NaOH. I pull down just the unit, and then I want to go to sodium sulfate, labeling it fully. This step is my balanced equation. I always pull down the full koi fish. These are whole numbers. They do not affect the sig figs. They're exact numbers. I write the actual coefficients. I don't reduce it. And then I just punch them in the calculator. Because what happens is students, when they reduce, they reduce funny. Or if I reduce, somebody's always like, where'd you get those numbers from? These are these numbers from the equation. Choose the ones that you need for it. This is the whole magic of why we balance equations. And then when we go to grams, then we'll have to go to kilograms. Um, whenever you go between grams and moles, it is one mole. The coefficients only show up once. They only show up in that middle step. All right, you add up the sodium sulfate and you should get around 142. Let's move this over. Chalk is so much nicer because I don't have to scribble it out. And then you'll change your grams back to kilograms. So you'll divide by the thousand grams to one kilogram, and you should get my number. So questions. If you have a question, somebody else probably has that question. I can hear the cat. Um, so I said we're going to look. We're going to look at different themes with this. So there's something called percent yield. So the formula is the actual over theoretic times 100 equals your percent. The shorthand is A over T. I do it as A over T equals percent because my head moves the decimal. Um, it's how you, it's, it's whoever your fourth grade teacher was that taught you uh, percents. So some of us have to multiply by the hundred uh, and some people just can change it. That's kind of a personal thing. The actual means from the experiment. It needs to either be given to you or you're going to solve for it. So here I gave it to you. In the aspirin lab, the mass that I get, that's your actual. All right, so that's my A, 52.3. The theoretic, that's the calculated. That was the whole point of the railroad tracks. So that's the calculated from the stoichiometry. Remember this big word up here? Um, so that's, 
that's the theoretic yield, our 65.5. Oops, I'm sorry, it's kilograms. They just have to be the same unit, kilograms and kilograms. And then times your 100. And there is always a rumor that happens, and this is wonderful because it's on videotape. Students will say, you said this, and I did not. Percents have sig figs. So if this number had three sig figs, all my numbers have three sig figs, my percent also has three sig figs. So you should get somewhere 79.9, 79.8, we're in the same ballpark. All right, I'm gonna pause my video unless there's a question. I'm gonna give you a minute, two minutes. I have minutes a question. To try that one. Go ahead. Where did the where did the sixty five point five come from? The question. Oh, okay. It's oh, it's part of that question. I ah, okay, gotcha. There was an A and B. Thank you for asking that. This is when we do the railroad track thing, a Mababi. That is your theoretic yield. That is. This is actually a really good question. Um, if everything worked perfect, that is what you would get. 65.5 kilograms. When you watch me in lab, nothing ever works perfect. If you were in lab, none of you would be perfect. In fact, if you got 100% yield of aspirin, it was contaminated or it was very wet. Um, and so they lost some. You always lose some. Like our bodies, I think, are like 40% like efficient or something. We're always losing. We lose a lot of heat. Uh, which is good. It keeps our bodies warm. But so it only was about 80% efficient, which is pretty good. All right, try the next one. Unless there's another question, I'm going to pause, give you a chance to try these. Rocky's here to help us. All right, there's our starting point. The iron, what's the Roman numeral three mean? It's charged. They all say the charge of the iron is plus three. That's why it's it's in the formula, right? The oxygen is negative two, or it's oxidation number. And you can draw a heart, you can draw a football, you can draw a turkey, you can draw Brussels sprouts, whatever you want there. Uh, you add up your numbers, you get around 160-ish. And if you're going to show your work like this, oops. You're gonna annoy me. You're not gonna get full credit probably. I'm gonna say label things uh, and you're gonna get lost and you're gonna be like, I don't know what to do. Label them always, not just the unit, but what compound or what part are you working with? All right, the other thing that is really helpful is to write down where you're going. So we are going to the iron. That gets us to mole. We do our mole to mole ratio, Fe203, and to the Fe. So do always check your equation. Um, sometimes the iron goes into multiple places. And so we want to make sure the ratio is coming from our equation. So if there is no koi fish, it is a one. All right, and then one mole of iron is 55.85 grams from the periodic table of Fe. And we punch it in and we get the 86.3. Uh, if you rounded your periodic table to three sig figs, you'd have around 86.3. Your answer, you should write more than just gram. You should say gram of what? So grams of iron. So back to the question Shaylee had asked, I think. This is our theoretic. And you don't have to write the whole word out. That's T. So for part B, A over T equals the percent. What is the actual? So A is my unknown. My theoretic is the 86.31 gram um, times the 100 equals my percent, 87.65. So you're going to have to divide by the 100. 
and then multiply by the 86.31. So it's like that cross multiplying thing. And you should get my answer um, for the actual. So a comment for you. The actual is always, let me go back. The actual will be less than the theoretic. The exception is if it's a problem where it said a mischievous gnome. Um, and so I think one of the post lab questions, I get over 100%. And it's because if it's contaminated, um, if it's if the sample is wet, so you're always going to lose some. The actual yield, you always lose some. It gets stuck to everything. Whatever you're, whatever the process is you're doing, there's always some of the sample that is lost at different places in there. Um, any questions? Right. Limiting reactant. So I, it took me a while when I was posting these to figure out why I had a picture of a marshmallow guy up here. So it's s'mores. So this was apparently my analogy was if you're going to make s'mores, so usually I do a demo here for you all and I make a s'more. And then during the break, everybody gets to come up and make a s'more. And we do it over a Bunsen burner. And it, it's really fun because how often do you get to in life make a s'more over a Bunsen burner? So, um, Anyway, if you have a bag of marshmallows, you have 50 marshmallows, and you have a box of graham crackers, this is like 50 pieces of graham crackers, and you only have one piece of chocolate. <laughs> How many s'mores can you make? Well, you can't make 50. You can only make one because you only have that one piece of chocolate. Because even though you started maybe with like 10 chocolate bars, you ate all the chocolate bars and now there's only one piece left. And those of you who have ever made s'mores know. So the limiting reactant is that piece of chocolate. Um, the other analogy I always talk about is the glove box because it's that time of year when we get the gloves out of the glove box. And you try to match up the gloves and you find five right hand gloves and only two left hand gloves. Mine's the other way. I find five lefts. So I always lose my rights. Um, and so I, none of my gloves match, but I only have two pair of gloves. Um, so the way you can recognize it is you're going to be given the mass of all your reactants. And you solve it for each reactant. So I don't want to say you solve it twice because we may run into a question where there's three reactants. It doesn't happen today. But um, I tell you, you have this many grams of zinc. And you have this many grams of silver nitrate, uh, which is the AgNO3 given in the problem. And the question wants to know how many grams of silver. So you are going to solve for the silver twice. You cannot add these together. You do them both twice. You're going to do little rubber tracks twice. You're going to get two answers, and then we're going to pick one. Now, there are always somebody who says, but what about the zinc nitrate? We didn't do anything with it. Don't worry. The zinc nitrate is important because we could not have a balanced equation without the zinc nitrate. So even though it's not in our math, it's still important. So don't worry about it. All right, you're going to, I'm going to pause this again. You're going to take like two minutes and go for it. Just try it, or you can go get a drink of water. All right, I'm gonna start solving, but if you're on a roll, keep going. But I do have a question for you to ponder, is how many of you had to count the number of twos and the number of threes to be, yeah, so I don't. Um, 
and it's apparently a trait um it actually fascinated me because yeah when there's that many but that's why sometimes i am very facetious and put a whole bunch of zeros like 2.000002 because i it it didn't even occur to me that people um my son would have to count them which is even more fascinating when you live with people and to see that all right so zinc is right on your periodic table that's the 65.39 or 65.4 three sig figs with the periodic table or four and again if you're going to label like that you're going to get lost so label fully by the way i dressed in the pink blue thing today it's kind of hard to know how to dress because it was acid base i couldn't decide um really don't know stoichiometry you can dress like a, a tree um all right and now my equation one mole of zinc and you're solving for the silver it's two moles of silver again you can one and now you go back to your grams when you ever go to grams it's always one mole uh silver is there 107.9 and we punch it in and we get a number to look at my answers so 7.34 so you could have said 107.9 or you could have round to 108 but 7.34 that's not our final answer we have to do this again with the silver nitrate again if you like you can draw your rainbow or whatever or just leave it blank so silver nitrate is going to be around 170-ish grams to a mole. Label. And it actually might be good for you to draw pictures. So you, you always have a blank there at the beginning. All right, now we do our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. We're going to the same thing twice. uh solve for same answer i don't know how to explain that better than that so again we're not solving one for silver and one for zinc nitrate the question the zinc nitrate is needed to balance the equation but we don't care about it here i was just reading these cards and I looked up zinc and it was actually really funny. These cards are really funny. It only has one sentence about each element. I have the whole book in my office, but zinc is a sacrificial element because zinc oxidizes faster than iron, which I didn't know. And so they put it on a lot of stuff. So it takes all the oxygen and spares. So for steel, uh, it keeps steel around longer. So it's a sacrificial one because they don't care about the zinc. They care about the steel um so i did this because a lot of students will do that and you can that's perfectly fine um i'm gonna put the twos because otherwise somebody's like where what happened to the twos and so like T tiffany's there saying that would be me um it's up to you you can you can say well they're both twos it's one to one I recommend that you do this, that you actually write the coefficients in against a recommendation. And then if you want, you can cross the two two out because they don't matter. What happens if you if you put the ones there, you'll end up doing it for one of them and then not for the other, and then you'll have it wrong. All right, the last step comes out the same for both questions, for both parts. You're going to, again, know it's a limiting reactant because you're going to have to solve twice or three times. Um, and this time we get 2.12. All right, so you're going to solve twice. Maybe we should have just written that up there. So you're going to solve, solve twice. I left myself room for each reactant. 
solving for the same answer means for the silver. Now, we have to play the XO game. So you're going to kiss the larger number goodbye. Meaning you're crossing it out. Because if you don't cross it out and kiss it goodbye, you're going to want to do something with it. You always cross out the larger one. And then you're going to circle or hug the smaller number. If you did four sig figs, apparently that's what you get. Um, so here we go. Another chance for a bonus. Why is it always going to be the smaller number? It's always on these problems. My method is the best way. There's like six, eight different ways you can do this. This one requires the least amount of thinking. And the least amount of thinking is a really good thing at this point in the term, especially when we're doing a celebration in two weeks. I know it's all over in two weeks. The party's over. Does anybody want to answer? You're going to always pick the smaller one. Any idea why? Was that what you were going to say, Tiffany, or are you going to ask a question? I was going to guess, but I already got a bonus, so I wanted to let somebody else try. But I'm probably wrong. Tatum, you want to take a guess? Go because, for it. Uh, it's the smallest amount in the reactant. Um, shoot, I lost my wording. Never mind. Never mind. It, it's the some more thing, right? <laughs> So if you only have that one piece of chocolate left, it's it limits. The whole thing is it limits you. So you can't make more than the least amount. When you get, the reason is when you get to 2.12 grams of silver, the silver nitrate ran out. So what is my limiting reactant? The one that runs out, the silver nitrate, the one that gives you the smaller answer. So now you have no more silver nitrate. You can't make it to 7.34 because the reaction actually stops at 2.12 grams. It's over. So there is more zinc still there waiting to react, but it can't unless you add more silver nitrate. Um, all right. My, again, my recommendation, do, do it my way. Every student who does this and just solves it twice, they get these. This ends up being like the question that everyone gets right on the celebration. So 22.2 grams calcium nitrate. And it says we mix it with our 33.3 grams sodium fluoride. So how do I know this is a limiting reactant problem? I'm giving you both reactants. You don't add them together you're going to solve twice and you're solving for calcium fluoride both times and then you're going to hug and kiss and i'm going to pause again give you a chance to go for it hopefully you guys have maybe done this and I will open next week's folder. Um, if it's not open tonight, so they can send me an email. Because some people might want to, like, get this all over with or not. So the calcium nitrate, you add up all the pieces. You should get around 164-ish grams to a mole. Again, labeling it fully so you know for the mold mole step what to do. People who label fully actually solve faster, like twice as fast than people who try to take shortcuts. 
All right, this pulls down. Now notice when I write my pieces in and I'm going to the calcium fluoride, I, I write the unit in, but then I look at my equation before I write my number in. And then my one mole to calcium fluoride 78-ish. Right, and that one gives me 10.6. And then we do the same with the sodium fluoride, which is like 42, yeah, grams to a mole. This is awesome. Usually my arm is about to fall. My shoulder is like, it's a lot of writing. It's so much easier writing like this. All right. Um, you're going to the same thing again. It requires the least amount of thinking. And again, in my equations, I'm not going to show the ones, but you can absolutely write them in if that helps you. You can underline them. Do what what helps you. And I'm so impressed how many of you, um, Kristen, I think you were the first one who had all the pens and everybody. This last step is going to be the same. So the 78 grams, and we punch it in. And so Tatum, I'm going to give you a chance again. So which one am I going to hug and which one am I going to kiss? She's there. Which gets, and actually, if you if you prefer football, what is that like Thanksgiving? So which answer gets the circle? The uh, top one, the 10 point. On mine, yeah, it's the smaller one. And then what, what do I do to the other one? You're going to kiss the larger one goodbye? Yeah, if you don't cross it out, you're going to want to add these together. You cannot add them together. So... Why do we cross it out? Why is it wrong? I do not know. Does anybody? Why do we cross it out? Because it doesn't run out? Or the other one doesn't run out? It doesn't run out. Yeah, it's the excess. So the limiting reactant is whichever one gives you the smaller amount the calcium nitrate. So it's the reactant that gives you the smaller number. Uh, the other one's called the excess. And it's always the smaller number because the reaction stops at that point. Um, all right, limiting reactants are awesome. You just solve twice and you do the hug and kiss and all right. I don't think anybody online does a hug and kiss. They might solve it twice, but again, there's like six other ways I could teach that, but that's the least brain requirement, which is a really good thing. All right, we're gonna do two more variations, more fun. So uh, we're solving for magnesium solid, so grams of magnesium. Wow, I gave us a lot of room. Oh, I know why. All right, that's what we're solving for. I apparently won it in micrograms because my answer is in micrograms. And look what we got. We are dealing with oxygen gas. We're dealing with tors. We're dealing with questions. Oh, where's the equation? The magnesium and the oxygen react. What? So somebody else picked up. Kaylee and Tatum got their bonus. What type of reaction and what am I going to get? Combination. It is a combo. So what's my product? MgO. Yeah, and then what are my coefficients, Philip? Two magnesiums and then two magnesium oxides. Great. All right, well, somebody else can tell me the Leo Gurr stuff. I'll tell you what, I want to just know what's the reducing agent. I had to tell you, Philip, it's really funny. Every time I say your name, I think it's from 
Jesus Christ Superstar, there's a song where they do all the disciples, and it's there's Philip and Bartholomew, blah, 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 and goes through it. Um, anyway, every time I hear your name, I think of that song. That's the only part of the song I know, too, that I've ever known. Anybody, Brittany, you already got a point. Somebody else is going to answer. What's my reducing agent? Do your halos, and I'll sing. Ah! Do your charges. Do your Leo Gerd, do your crisscross. Anybody? So magnesium is losing. Oxygen's gaining. So oxygen's my oxidizing agent. My reducing agent is the magnesium. This is like one question that does the whole term. It's magnificent. Because it's PV equals NRT. We have a pressure. We have a really small pressure. 0 0.035 Tor. We have a volume. And we have a temperature. So, PV equals NRT. That's why I gave us so much room, because we're going to do this, and then we're going to do the stoichiometry thing. We need R. R is 0 0.0821. Anybody know the units? ATM, liters per mole, K. So to do this, we have to do a few changes before we can plug in to PV equals NRT. Anybody know what we got to do? Anybody remember? Not even Brittany's shouting here. You, you guys weren't like big fans of gas laws. That must have been a really rough. What was going? Was that like election week? Was, was gas laws the week of the election? That's that's my theory. I was pondering this today because usually they do great with gas laws. I think it was the week before the election or something. And so yeah, we just have all like let's not think about that. You guys remember you add the two seventy three. So we go to Kelvin. So that's my temperature. And I can't do it in Tor. I have to divide by the 760 Tor to change it to one ATM. You are solving for moles. So we're going to divide by the R and T. So we're going to do PV over RT. And this is going to give us N. This is going to be our moles of oxygen, because oxygen is a gas. Magnesium was the solid. Told you that in the first question. So go ahead, try it. And then, once you get there, this is what I want you to do, is to get to your grams of magnesium. So I'm gonna pause this. And if you get it, or if you don't wanna try it, try the next one. I'm gonna pause this for people to try these for a moment. I'm going to go for it. So my pressure, when I plug this piece in, you should get like a really small number. 4.61 times 10 to negative 5 ATMs. Good news was we didn't have to do anything with the volume. We just leave that in liters. My R is the 0 0.0821 ATM liter mole K. And my temperature is the 300 Kelvin. And when you punch that in, I didn't give myself enough room. Uh, you get a really small number, 7.14 times 10 to negative 7. This is moles of oxygen. I'm just going to go down here. Yeah, I keep going. So now we have to do our stoichiometry. So the mistake students make with this, this is why I went to micrograms. You never need to go to grams of the oxygen. We're already at moles. 
we just do straight to the mole to mole ratio from the beautiful equation that Philip gave us. And then we do look up magnesium, 24.3 grams. Uh, then I went to micrograms because I didn't tell you to do that, but I did. Remember that funny sign near the MCG? Does anybody remember micrograms? Good memories. Two months ago. That's milli. Is it to the negative six? It is. Where's the negative six go? On the bottom. It does. It will go with the grams if you're doing this 10 to negative six. So one microgram is 10 to negative six grams. And that's where I got my answer from. So we can use gas laws to get to moles. <laughs> and then once we're at moles, we just go straight to our mole to mole ratio. All right. Let's look at question number two. This is it. Back is blank. All right. Uh, so I give you, what does that M mean? Oh, we saw this earlier. Molarity. It is. Who said that, Tiffany? <laughs> She's disguised her voice. So molarity is moles per liter. So I'm going to have to change my milliliters to liters, so either a thousand milliliters to a liter or milli is milli is 10 to negative three. And then I bring in my molarity, 0 0.321 moles per liter. But again, you want to label moles of NH3. Where am I going? That's where the highlighter, those different colors. You're going to your grams of H2O. All right, I'll leave it for you guys to solve that. And then I gave you 9.87 times 10 to the 22 molecules oxygen. What do I want to do with that? Do I like combine them somehow? What type of reaction or what type of problem is this? Somebody, anybody. This is this a percent yield? Or the other limiting one. reactant? It is a limiting reactant. I gave you each of the reactants. You are going to solve twice for the H2O, and then you're going to do your hug and kiss thing and see if you get my answer. My answer is wrong, by the way. Imagine that. All right, I'm going to pause this. Give you two minutes. Solve. So we solved twice because I gave you two pieces of information. I found my red pen. Um, this one I started for us. So molarity um, means moles per one liter. So we get our milliliters to liters, we get to moles, we just want to label them once we get there. And then my balanced equation, I have four moles of NH3. Um, again, writing down where you're going, because you can go between anything in the equation. So we're going to the H2O. I don't reduce, I just keep both numbers in and I punch them in my calculator, six divided by four. Um, and then one mole of water, just a reminder, water is two hydrogens and one oxygen, so it's around 18. And when you punch that in, I think that one gives you the 2.5. No, that gives you a different number. This is NH3. I had 0 0.567. Did somebody else get that? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. All right, Avogadro's uh, molecules, and then you do want to divide by the 6.02. I want to remind you, you do want to put this in parentheses when you divide by it, so you divide by both parts. Um, and then also, it is a positive 23. It's a whole, it's like the mother load of molecules per one mole. 
uh, oxygen, oxygen. And then my oxygen, seven moles of oxygen. We're going to the water. Limiting reactant, you just solve for the same thing twice. Don't try to do anything fancy. And this is where you get the 2.53 grams. So two answers. Goodbye. Kiss the larger one goodbye. This is why I have boxes. You know those boxes that have been there for all of your study sets and stuff? It is these problems is why that then the one you hugged, the one you gave a hug to, that is the one that goes in the box. The one you kiss goodbye, it's gone. It was just wrong. So my limiting reactant, I didn't ask that, but I will now. The limiting reactant is the NH3. So it has to be a reactant. This was the mass of H2O that we get. This is the one that we run out of. All right, anybody want to take a stab at the Leo Gur who hasn't? You already got some, Tiffany. But we'll let Tiffany do if nobody, nobody else wants. Bonus point, Thanksgiving, bonus point. All right, go for it. Is the Leo the O2? No. Oxygen, oxygen had the halo, right? Halo, never mind. And then it ends up at negative two. So oxygen is your GER. So it is your oxidizing agent. So and nitrogen is the first one? It is actually the nitrogen because the nitrogen, the hydrogens, I didn't give myself much room. The nitrogen is negative three with the, and then over here, because it's now with the oxygen, it's at a plus four. So it's going from a minus three to a plus four. So it's losing. So I did my that backwards in my head. Reducing agent is the NH3. That's, yeah. Uh, any questions? Okay, I'm going to stop. Stop sharing.